Welcome back to another epic video. It is 12.15 a.m. and this video is supposed to go out at 6 a.m. today. So I'm gonna be staying up, probably pulling an all-nighter. So this is a cup of coffee in my hand. Let's get the show on the road. This is going to be a look inspired by, not a look recreation, inspired by Euphoria. One of the most beautiful looking things I've ever seen in my life. Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of you guys have asked me to do a look recreation or just create a similar look to Euphoria. So this is exactly what's happening here. We're taking similar concepts of like look recreation, but then we're throwing our own flair on it. I have the utmost respect for Tom Poole. I genuinely feel like he's one of the best colorists in the entire world. Cause seriously, every time I see a movie or a TV show graded by Tom, I'm always like, how the hell did he do it? So I'm not here trying to show you how it was done. This is just my interpretation and we're going to be creating a look inspired by this, okay? First of all. Second of all, we're gonna make our lives a little bit harder. I'm not gonna be using any third-party plugins. I'm gonna be using only the tools available inside Resolve. So that also makes it very difficult because if I'm using the same film negatives and film prints used on this show, it will make our lives a lot easier. But I don't wanna do that because what if some of you don't have access to those tools? So this is going to be a level playing field. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm sure you guys are gonna get a lot out of it. Even people that are avid watchers and pretty much swim in the Kool-Aid and watch every single piece of content I put out. I promise you there's going to be something new here for you. And we recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing, and working with 8-bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus, we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades, and some of my personal LUTs. So guys, do not forget to check out the training. Link is up top and in the description below. And if you love me, then do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness, and follow me on Instagram. Let's roll the intro. Time to get the show on the road. Let's analyze this frame first. Okay, so this is the shot that we're gonna be recreating, not a one-to-one -one match. We're gonna be using this as an inspiration. And that should always be the goal for you when you're trying to recreate a certain look. Don't just become a copycat. That is never the point. What you really want to do instead are these four things. You got to nail your contrast. So that is number one. What am I talking about? I'm talking about my highlights and my shadows. As long as you get that right, your image is going to fall into place. Number two, you got to work on your colors. Okay, now they don't need to be, again, one-to-one -one match, but they're going to be in a similar space or in the vicinity. So like here, we got a nice, you know, healthy red and blue teal action going on, right? So we can see it here, right? All this red and then complementing with that. So that's what's happening here. You want to make sure that you, uh, even if your colors are not there, you can swing them a little bit to get them again in the same realm, but not look for a 100% one-to-one match. Number three, you got to focus on your saturation. That is also very important. And use this uh, as your indicator, okay? Vector scope, like where everything is sitting, how pushed is it? And then that is going to help you dial your image in the same world. And then finally, we are talking about texture. I cannot type at all. So it's really hard to type here. Texture. Okay, so what is that? What am I talking about? I'm talking about, you see this grain? Like all of that, like here. Um, I punched it enough so you guys can even see it on YouTube and hopefully you can. Make sure you're watching the video in the highest quality. That texture is what's giving it that look DNA. That is extremely important. So once again, if you really wanna nail these looks, make sure the contrast is in the ballpark. Colors are looking similar, don't need to be exact the same. Saturation? you should get pretty close to it if you really want to trick the eye to think that, okay, this looks exactly like whatever look it is that you're trying to create. And then texture, I'm going to show you 
how to dial that in. So these are the things that we're focusing on. So before we jump into the actual tutorial section, let's make one quick pit stop. Go on imdb.com, type in Euphoria, and under technical specification, this is what you're going to find out, okay? Season 1 was shot on Ari Alexa 65, which is a digital camera. The entire Season 2 is shot on Ari Cam LT, which is a film camera, okay? So everything that you see in Season 2 that you love is shot on film. This is why it looks so good. It looks like film because it's shot on film. That's what they say, right? Like the best way to get the film look is to shoot on film. Majority of it was shot on the Kodak Vision 3 500T stock, but they also used the cross-process Ektachrome, okay? And um, graded by Tom Poole. Personally, I feel like one of the best colorists in the world. Uh, the stuff that he puts out is absolutely fire. Uh, a really cool dude. And uh, you guys should definitely give him a follow. Tom O. Poole um, on Instagram. All right, so this is the clip that we're working with. It is shot on Red Dragon in log. And let's just go ahead and park it on our hero frame. It's going to be right here. Okay, it is pretty sharp, looks great. This is what we got. I've already gone ahead and converted it to Rec. 709 since I have all the information I need to do so. I dropped a color space transform, plugged in the right parameters, and then did a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 conversion. So. This is what it looks like, straight out of the camera in Rec. 709 untouched, okay? So this is what we got. This is where we want to end up. All right, so back to our shot. Let's start prepping this up. So I'm going to go ahead and create six nodes. It's going to be a super simple node tree. If you want to learn more about a proper node tree structure, which is absolutely a must, check out the free training, okay? So here's the thing. If you're working with paid plugins, you actually can get access to the film negatives used on the show. So check this out, okay? Dehancer Pro, if I pop that open, look at this. We have the Kodak Vision 3 500T. We also have a flavor of Actachrome, okay? So we have these available right here. So you can use these to build that look. And that's why we spend some time doing our research before we jump in. So we have that information. And if we know which film negative or film prints are used, we can just apply them and then hit the ground running. Now, you also need to understand that Company 3 has their own color scientists that are creating these crazy concoctions that nobody else has access to. So I'm not saying that you're going to apply this and boom, all of a sudden you got the euphoria look. You still have to put in some work and you still may not get there because they might be doing something that is proprietary. We don't know about it. And that's what's creating that secret sauce. But we're going to learn how to get a similar look inside Resolve by using Resolve's default LUTs that we have available under LUTs, Film Looks. If you have Resolve, whether you have the free version or paid version, you're going to have these available, okay? And I'm going to be using a... Kodak 2383 D65, which is a cooler version. But before we get there, let's convert our image from log to Rec. 709. I'm going to drop on Color Space Transform. We already know the camera information, so we're going to plug that in right here. And then output is going to be Rec. 709. And then output Gamma instead of Gamma 2.4 is going to be Cineon Film Log. And the reason why we're doing that is so we can have a proper conversion when we apply our LUT. If you, again, want to learn more about that, then definitely check out the training. I go deep in explaining to why that is. Okay. This is what we got going on right now. So if we go to our Rex around, it looked like that. With our LUT applied, it's already looking quote unquote more film light. One of the things that you need to understand right off the bat is which battles are worth fighting for, which ones to let go. What am I talking about? If we pull up our reference and look at this, we got three main sources, light sources going on here, okay? I'm talking about the colors specifically. We got the moonlight in the back creating that nice blue light. We got natural light coming through that's giving her that nice, perfect skin. And then we also have this red light coming through, okay? Whereas here, we only have the red light and we have the green light. 
done. That's it. Those are the two colors that we have available here. So we're not going to fight and unnaturally create the perfect skin tone. That's not going to happen. And this is what I meant by don't just do one to one match. Be logical about what you can and can't do with what you got. So that out of the way. Another thing that I'm going to tell you, you see the highlights here. We're not going to have that. Our highlights are not going to be this bright because we don't have a harsh highlight coming through. So our image is going to live somewhere around here, 512, around that mark. It's not going to go past that. So those things are very important to remember. All right, let's get back to it. So first thing that we need to do is balance our image and bring up the exposure. So one thing that bothers me, it's not necessary, but that I want to do, you see like how the cyan or the red is just crushed down here. So one thing that you can try to do to fix that would be this, all right, hue versus saturation. And you see like how the cyan is peeking through. If I were to just press and hold this and pull it down, look what's happening in the scopes. I'm bringing that up, that information. And I can just leave it here and it's okay. And now what I can do is I can just not even overcomplicate it. I can just leave it here and we're fine. We can pump in color if we want later on, okay? So this is good, already looking better. Now, let's go in here. I'm gonna go under HDR palette. I'm gonna click right here and select the proper information. So under color space, I'm gonna select red, white, gamut, RGB. And then under gamma, I'm gonna select red log 3G10. Once you have this activated, then the HDR palette works as your camera raw module. So almost like when we increase the exposure here, it's working in stops. Like if we go to one, we just like increased it by one stop. So that's how it works here. So this is really cool, okay? So I'm gonna put it actually at one, so we can just bring up one stop. Maybe that is a bit much, so I'm gonna dial it back to maybe three quarters, something like that. If I do before and after, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave it there. Another thing that I wanna do right now is I want to add some noise reduction. It's just the overall image is too noisy and it's kind of distracting. So I'm going to go in here under motion effects. I'm going to set that to three. I'm going to set my motion um, type to better. And I'm going to take my temporal threshold and I'm going to crank it up to around 18-ish. And it cleans it up. It cleans it up quite a bit. Like before, after, looks really nice. The details is intact, so I like that. I'm going to leave that there. Uh, next step is going to be, let's balance out our image a little bit, right? Like, so if we see this image, what are we seeing? We see nice blue tones, a lot more on the cooler side than what we got going on. So let's pull out that green that we have in our image. I'm going to be using my offsets. You can go under color, activate printer lights, and then look at the keys that you have to hit to either add or subtract certain colors. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be calling it out so you know what I'm doing. So I'm going to start off by subtracting my green. So minus green and already look at the difference just by like before and after. But I'm going to keep going, okay? This is already looking really nice. I'm already like just two taps and then already it's looking much better. Can I go any further? No, I think that's too much. So now what I want to do is I want to try adding some cyan. So this is plus one cyan, not bad. Plus one red, plus two red. Let's come back on the red. Okay, somewhere around here, not too bad. Let's add one more cyan. Let's pull back. And right now I'm just playing around. Like that's very important guys to experiment, just like play around and see what's happening and feel out your footage. Okay. So you see the back right here is looking very similar to that. That's cool. And I just did that by playing around with these, my offsets. That's it. That's all I was doing. So this is already looking pretty good. And I can even see it right here that it started to look similar to what we got going on here. So obviously we're still far off on the contrast level, like it's still very much off. So we're going to have to adjust that. And we're going to do that in this node right here with our custom contrast, okay, or custom curves, I should say. So what I'm going to do here is, again, I'm going to go back in here, pull these up next to each other. And now what I want to do is I'm going to pull this down a little bit, pull this up. Because one thing that I noticed in this shot, which is very interesting, is that the toe, the low end is very soft. 
Like I can see through everything, right? The, all the shadows, I can clearly see that. The highlights are very harsh and obviously part of it is the way it's lit. But again, it just feels like, you know, we're aggressive on the highlights and we're very soft on the shadows, right? So let's try to do something similar. And when I start messing with my custom contrast, the colors are going to go all over the place because once again, it's solely lit with RGB lights. So we're going to control that. Don't worry about it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create something like this. And then I'm going to create another point right here and another point right here. So I'm going to just go pretty aggressive. And then what I want to do is I want to create a point here. That's going to be my black points. And then I want to create another gentle point right here. And then this is going to be basically where do we want the majority of our image to live? And I think somewhere around here, everything feels like it belongs, like where it's supposed to be. All right. I'm looking at the black points to the black points. I think we can go a little bit deeper. So I'm going to grab this and pull this down. I'm going to keep pulling it down. To something like that. And I think this is looking pretty close to what we see here. Okay. Maybe pull it up just a little bit. Okay. So the contrast is looking pretty good. Once again, we don't have those highlights, so we're not going to go there. Remember in the beginning, I said, we're going to be living in this world right here. So that's where we are. So now we can obviously see that the colors are just ridiculous. Like look at this red to that. So before I even go there, let's see if we can get some more information here. Okay. So I'm going to pull this up a little bit. Let's just keep finessing the contrast, right? Like what, what do we have to do? So the black points are good. I'm happy with that. All right. The contrast is good. It's just the saturation that's throwing us off. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go here and the best way to attack it is this. Just go kill the saturation completely. And now start coming up on your global saturation and see where we want to be. Okay. In comparison. So to me, Something like this looks pretty good. And here, what I would do is I would go under hue versus hue, take our reds and swing them a little bit. And now our reds are getting in that similar magenta that we got going on here. Obviously, it's not exactly the same because it's not lit the same way. So if it bothers you with how saturated it is, first of all, let's check our saturation. So let's look at this image and then look at our image. And if you look at the two, the reds actually are more saturated here than in our frame. So, all right, something to keep in mind. And then the next thing is our cyan are pretty close to where our cyan are here. And that's also very important for the overall saturation. So honestly, I am pretty happy with where my image is sitting. I can try to bring it up a little bit more, just overall exposure. If we want to bring it up, maybe we can try it in the HDR palette and let's go up a stop. So if I go up a stop and now compare the two images right here, I think it might not be a bad idea to do what we just did. Um, I would want to go back in my contrast and just make sure that our black points are still intact. And I feel like we can bring them down just a little bit. And now if I do before and after between these. Again, guys, we just wanted to use this as an inspiration and then Take it from there. I mean, you have to remember we started with this and this is where we are. Okay. Yes, it took a little bit of jiggery pokery, but you know, we're the odds are against us. Okay. We're using a completely different lot. We're working with what we got. 
and we're trying to create something very interesting. So let's do this. Let's go back here. All right, so now the final touch is going to be dropping on the film grain to get that texture. And I'm going to go with something like 16 millimeter archival print. And it does a pretty good job. Like if we go here and do before and then after. And now if we go and look at this right here, obviously the image is taken from the web. So the quality is not that high. This looks pretty close. It looks pretty similar. Okay. Maybe it's a little less grainy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under the strength and I'm going to pull it back a little bit. And now if I do before and after, we are pretty close. This is before, this is after. Okay, just a little touch. All right, so now that I'm looking at this, there is one more step that I must take because it's going to drive me crazy. So I feel like, let's pull this over. I'm going to create one more node here. And let me try to think out loud so you guys can see what I'm talking about. When we look at this image right here, let's go back to our reference, pull this up. And when we look at this image right here, okay, like look at how every color belongs and there's so much like variation in each color. Whereas here, it just sort of feels like a mush, right? Like this red is like, there's just no variation. It's just like a blob. So what can we do to pull more information so we can see that, you know, a little highlight that is less saturated on the cheekbones than the rest of it? How can we do that? One of the ways you can achieve that is going in your HDR palette and just take your shadows saturation, like literally your shadow saturation and dial it back a little bit. So let me pull up a reference so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to dial, I'm going to leave it almost like where it is, like just this much. And that's it. The next thing I want to do is you see this background. I want to get this in this world. I still want to leave a little bit of like teal. But right now it's really overpowering. So now I'm going to go under my light saturation right here and I'm going to take it. I'm going to start pulling it back until I get just a hint like this right here. Just a hint of that. Right. Then what we had before and look at by doing this, how much detail I brought back in the face. So if I do before, look at the cheekbones right right here and the red and look at after. Look at the detail everywhere. Here, right here in the cheekbones, the face, all of a sudden we got this detail coming through. And personally, I feel like it made a huge, huge, huge difference. Like this is before, this is after. And just to take it to the next level, one more thing we can do is bring up the image and use the wipe feature to just bring it really close and see you know, I can even do one more thing. I can actually go under sizing and move my reference over so we can like really see what you we're doing and move this over like that. And now what I see is that I have too much magenta than what's going on over here. So and also my image is too desaturated now. So I'm going to go back in my HDR palette. I'm going to kill the shadow saturation. So this is already looking good. I'm going to swing the global hue and just make sure that I get a little bit more of that orange. So even something like that. If anything, I'm going to take my shadows. I'm going to pull it down a little bit and let me take my light and lift it up. Bring it back. Not too much even something like that. I mean, I personally, I'm going to say like, I was not expecting to make this many changes with the HDR palette, but this is what I'm trying to tell you, right? Like, don't be afraid to use the new tools because they can really help you out. Like if I were to go back and do before and after, I personally feel like every single change that these tools are making, I welcome it. I can go back in light and pull it back just a tiny bit so I don't overdo it. And then in terms of the shadow, let's lift it up. Bring it back. 
something like that. I'm leaving these changes in. So now what we can do is take all of this, kill it and start from the top. So we started with our CST to film print conversion. Then we went ahead and balanced our shot. Custom curve is what created that real juice. Then we added the noise reduction, grain, and then finally went in and used our HDR palette to like really dial in the, I mean, you saw the power of this tool. I mean, it's absolutely gnarly. And like, just look at how close we actually got. We still have our own flair. This is our take on creating this amazing euphoria look. Let's check out the final look in full screen. these tutorials get pretty complicated to produce because I'm always doing my best to come up with new ways to do the same thing. So then you guys have more tools in your toolbox. So hopefully there was a lot of stuff here um, that was of value to you. If you want to take your color grading skills to the next level, then I promise you give me one hour and I will literally change the trajectory of your color grading career. Check out the free training. Link is up top and in the description below. And on that note, just do me a favor before you end this video, smash that like button. It'll mean the world to me. Subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. And remember, work hard, get obsessed, get possessed. I will see you guys in the next video.